questions. So now moving on to uh, zone storage BOF. Um, so the agenda, um, this is not, you know, going to cover zone storage in detail. This is, I'm going to provide a really fast uh, intro. Uh, so please, you know, excuse the fact that I'm jumping through a lot of stuff there. For more of an introduction to zone storage, please uh, read some of the documentations that I'll be providing here and the references there. Uh, I'll also be uh, talking about problem solutions and discussion. Uh, so some news, uh, zone storage microconference has been accepted to Linux plumbers, so uh, great. And uh, ho hopefully you guys can get uh, folks to submit talks there. And then we'll see you guys at plumbers to follow up on this and expose uh, zone storage concepts to, you know, the, the user world rather than the kernel world. Um, so for the, if you guys are not familiar with zone storage at all, just go to this page. It has really great documentation um, and it, it is the home for information about zone storage. Um, so zone storage, uh, again, a fast recap, is a class of storage device that enables host and storage devices to cooperate uh, to achieve all these little, you know, things. Higher storage capacity is increased through code lower latencies. Um, and uh, there's different form factors that you can, you know, use zone storage solutions on. The latest and trendiest one, obviously, is on NVMe front, um, we would refer to those as ENS. Um, there's those games that are listed here. So zone storage um, essentially divides space into zones. Writes must be sequential. Each zone keeps a write pointer and tracks position of the next write. You can't overwrite directly. If you do want to do that, then you essentially need to do a zone reset. Um, on SMR, conventional zones are optional. Um, and NVMe support uh, optional namespaces support conventional IO, uh, <laughs> IO access. Uh, so there is support for con uh, conventional uh, uh, namespaces as well. And drives can exist with only sequential uh, zones. So that's, that essentially means that you can end up with a world where you have drives that you can only do sequential writes. This is very important, and file system developers need to keep that in mind. So uh, recap also on the file system lay of the land. Uh, maybe I missed something here. I'm not sure. I think this covers kind of like what we support right now. Anyone else? I don't know if I missed something here. ButterFS, F2FS, device mapper, and ZoneFS. On uh, in zone FS, I'll, I'll elaborate enough folks to ask Danny to, to explain a bit more of zone FS in a bit, if, if that's okay. Um, but um, let's get into some of the uh, current, uh, you know, problems that have come up. Oh, well, actually, uh, in ecosystem, I should indicate that to replace one uh, zone storage device, contrary to like the typical world of storage, you do want to ensure that they have the same zone sizes if you're trying to do parity matching of some sort. Um, ZNS does also require a manual setting of the I.O. scheduler to empty the deadline. So uh, that's something that I hope that maybe we can fix somehow. I'm not sure we have a solution yet for that. Um, yes. That's only partially true. I think empty deadline is only needed if you have the file system on top of it. So if Can you repeat that again? Um, empty deadline is only needed if you're doing regular writes. So if you're doing um, just uh, zone append, to your CNS device, you don't need empty deadline at all. Uh, if, if you MKFS or uh, ButterFS. Uh, on of course, that, then you need to use empty yes. deadline. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Sorry, I, I should have been more specific, thanks. So, you know, I'm not sure if we have a solution to this yet, but, you know, it would be nice if we did, so that way, you know, we don't have use for this to do this. I think, I'm not sure if we can do this with new dev rules. Um, uh, Matthias? Isn't the ButterFS work really great for this? I mean, with the RAID and doing, like, chunks and so on? Doesn't, I mean, this is a, this is a real issue. Um, isn't ButterFS mm -hmm. what is great for this capability able to handle different sizes of zones across different devices? It does. ButterFS RAID isn't supported on some devices yet. No, I... Well, I mean, you have patches. I have patches. What? I would think I, had to It could again. be made, yes, but not in the current stage. Okay. And yeah. it's, it's a long, long, long-term project, so I, I have that one really, really way down on the task list. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's one, uh, one, there is one more point about yes. MQ deadline, just to clarify for everybody. So uh, why is all storage require MQ deadline? It's <coughs> simply to guarantee right order. So whatever the order, um, the, so the, the application on the user has to issue right sequentially. Uh, and whatever supports on storage does that, but the block IO stack 
uh, doesn't currently any, any particular ordering for execution of, of requests, and we have to guarantee that for rights. And the current implementation, those guarantees are provided by MQ deadline using um, a zone right locking mechanism, which limits actually rights to at most one per zone, which kind of uh, is really bad for, for NVMEs and S as a, that limits performance. So the issue with MQ deadline is uh, not really MQ deadline in itself, is how do we guarantee right ordering? So the current implementation relies on MQ deadline, we could think of something else. So that's to the larger picture of the part here with MQ deadline. Thank you so much, Damien. If the, Damien, could you share your, I think you've done some work in this area. Do you think you could share your so patches at Initially, some point? The, 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 so the work started when we were not uh, MQ yet. So that was 4. Dot what? Uh, 10, 4.10 10 kernel uh, with SMR support. So that was uh, not MQ at the time. And we uh, were doing, we were doing this, this uh, right ordering guarantee using a similar mechanism um, with zone right locking within this SCSI device router. That was, uh, however, really bad for performance because in many cases that would limit, stall the drive queue to QDEPS 1 uh, for every write, essentially, even if you had grid behind that, that you could be sending. Uh, so, and MQ uh, added, uh, the switch to MQ added more problems, so we had to, to redesign that. And so the zone right locking uh, went up from the SCSI driver uh, to the block layer, uh, and the scheduler was the uh, easiest place to put it. So, um, yeah, it is in, in, as part of the scheduler, I still think it shouldn't be, but right now it, it's really, really hard to put it somewhere else, so. Oh, but I'd like to say something about the locking per zone, right? Like. I think there's some misunderstanding here about limiting Q depths to the drive. Right? So it's Q depth one per zone, but you can submit IOs to multiple zones at once. So you, you can easily build high Q depths to the device, even though you have zone zone locking, right? So so just make it clear for the whole community, right? That's yes, a separate issue. Well, yes and no. So yes, you're right. And for an AGD, actually, that uh, that is that. Is I'm, I'm talking ZNS for zone yeah, storage. But I'm coming there. Uh, the simple fact that you have an IO scheduler in the past for, for an SSD hurts. Sorry, I missed that. What was that? The simple fact that you have an IO scheduler when using an SSD uh, hurts performance. Yeah. Like yeah really okay. significantly hurts. So, but isn't, isn't this like a, in some ways a user space problem, right? Like if, if you write your application to guarantee that you have one outstanding IO per zone, then, then you know, like you, you can build high Q depth to the device. I of do course, it all the time. It's not the problem of, of high Q depth. Yeah. And, and that's why for ZNS MQ deadline is has to be set manually. We don't default to it because yeah, we, we we kind of want people to do that. The problem though is that it's hard to to guarantee that uh, a write from an application is not going to be split for whatever reason. Yeah. So so that that's the key thing here, right? Like, what are those boundaries, right? I, I think it's well defined when it's split, right? Depending on the size of it, isn't is this is something you can clearly get to? No. Okay. No. It's it's not so much um, the the split or something, or that you can write to several zones at once. Um, the thing here is um, streaming writes. So I if you want to do streaming uh, streaming writes, it would be logical to submit all these uh, all these writes in one go and basically make use of the queuing. And that is what the, uh, what the mecha uh, specs was designed for. As it turns out, it's really hard to guarantee that the IOs you sent down to the drive in order will also arrive at the drive in order and will be processed by the drive in order. Because there really is literally nothing. I, I think the problem is separate zones, not the same zone. No, so it's, it is the same zone. The problem is the same zone, of course. So. My point is, from my perspective, I write applications that just use multiple zones. Yeah. Right. Sure. I and mean, if you have a bug, if and you so have there's too much of this talk about uh, you you can't get QDEP, you can't do this. You can. You just need to write to multiple zones yeah. at once. So, so this is, this becomes a philosophical question, right? So, uh, Google is using uh, something called hybrid SMR. Uh, 
I think the official standards name is zone domains, um, where zones go online and offline, and you have an LBA space, which is conventional zones, and an LBA space, which is SMR zones. SMR zones have all these magic properties, like a right can only be in one zone, which means uh, for a variety of reasons, we didn't, we couldn't use the deadline scheduler. We were using a CFQ derived scheduler. So we manually hacked the CFQ scheduler to never merge IO requests so that, you know, if you have two requests to, you know, two 256 meg write requests to adjacent zones, that the IO scheduler will not helpfully merge them for you. That is a hack. That is a hack that is an out of tree patch in the Google kernel. We have been thinking about how do we actually try to work within um, knowledge of uh, you know, zone domain storage for in the upstream kernels. And one of the philosophical divides, for example, is whether or not the kernel should be tracking the right pointer, right? And if the kernel tracks the right pointer, then you can guarantee that things don't go out of order. No, you um, can't. No, well, no, you can't. Yeah, no, there, no, there, no, there you are can't. some things. But the point is this, right? Um, my understanding, and we're not using the in-kernel zone um, stuff at all. We are using pure user case uh, solution because we didn't want the kernel into the business of tracking right pointers. That was overhead we considered unnecessary. We would much rather user space do it. The problem is that a lot of people think that way. And, yeah, and you know, we've made it work, right? We actually have that working in production. Yes. It also is using out of tree patches that is not sustainable. We are thinking about how do we solve that problem in an upstream kernel, right? But you know, part of it is, you know, and it's sort of a blessing, is that the, the upstream kernel doesn't understand um, these, you know, zone domain drives which is good because we actually have some fundamental disagreements with the direction that the, the you know, upstream has been using. So we're doing it purely in user well, space, even though we know that is not a long term I think this is a great approach. topic for plumbers if you're going. Hmm? This would be a great topic for plumbers yeah. if you're going. So l l let me just move on a bit here and then if we, oh, sorry. Oh, uh, I, I want to acknowledge what Seth just said and, and we, it's hard for us can get away with a lot because we have all the time in the world, but we are seeing a real issue with the having IO scheduler associated with SSDs and, and zone drives, and we do see a good impact on our DNS drives when you use the input deadline scheduler. We are we are capable of disabling it and if IO we can do it and all that, so it is possible with application and all that. Um, but it's it is something that we are we'll, we are working on and we'll continue to work on and we'll love to work with everyone on getting to the right way to do it. So if it's not clear so far, I'm not even done explaining some of the existing problems, but it is an exciting time right now for you know all these concepts, right? So collaboration is highly welcomed and you know, I'm glad that we have the right people here in the room. Um, so current uh, things, um, basically the non-power two patches now have been posted. Version two of that is coming soon. Um, I'd just like to reiterate here that ButterFS check does not work for any zone storage image dumps at the moment. Um, I, I suspect that we may need uh, a bit more zone information on disk for that to support this properly. Um, Superblock, just to recap, is a bit different because it's dealt with a bit diff differently on, on zone storage devices. Um, so uh, here's an explanation of how it works for Power of Two and then non Power of Two. But you know, you know, you guys should just try to get wrap your heads around how you know this is being dealt with uh, on zone devices, given that. You have to have copies of the super block. Um, you basically have uh, two zones that are basically being used at the same time. Um, and I mean, keep, keep expanding on this. This is an example of uh, the super block copies on zone zero and then zone one. Once you run out of space on zone zero, you jump onto zone one and then you reset zone zero. You go back and back and back and back and back. So that's pretty much what's being done. Uh, so just you know, one question, for instance, do we write to the super block on every single write today? Uh, just want to clarify. I, I just, this is not clear to me. What's that? Yeah, it's like every of sync, every transaction commit. So like in a normal system, probably every 30 seconds. And then like if you're doing an RPM, like every millisecond. 
if you have application doing all sync, that's going to happen too. Okay. Um, so this is kind of like where we're at today, and I'd uh, like to now pass on, um, invite Damien to see if uh, he can elaborate a bit more on the world of ZoneFS, because I'm not really too familiar with like its uses, you know, uh, so I'd just like to uh, ask for, if, if I captured, you know, kind of like what's, what was discussed and ideas on the mailing list, I try to capture at least uh, one use case here, uh, and, you know, relating back to the other conversation on killing, you know, IO controls, for instance, is just a silly example, but, you know, it's an, you know, real, real, real world problem, for instance, right? Yeah, so for ZoneFS, the, 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 the long-term goal is to try to avoid to have to do all direct writes, and uh, the current requirement is that writes must be all direct, and the reason for that is that if, uh, if, we, if we go through the page cache with buffered write, we have no guarantee that the page cache is going to destage uh, pages in order uh, for, for the writes uh, in, into the, the zones. So all direct is the only solution currently. Uh, Willy, Matthew, you're in the room, no? He's not here, but he, he's, he posted some patches that could uh, allow uh, bypassing that. So uh, essentially, uh, all sync, uh, looking like a, a, a right through instead of right back, uh, which would keep the ordering. So it, that will allow um, buffered writes, but right through, so direct to, to the zone, but as you, you also uh, uh, preload your, your page cache, which is nice to have to reduce uh, uh, device accesses if you have to do reads after writing. So uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the long-term goal, but that's beyond zone FS. There's a lot of things to, n to think of uh, for that uh, besides zone FS itself. Great, great, thanks. Um, I'd also like to invite Kent, if you can expand a bit of it. Uh, perhaps people are not aware of like the, the bells and whistles that may be possible with BcacheFS for his own storage devices. At least I'm a bit excited about that. Yeah, uh, BcacheFS is going to be getting full uh, native zone device support. And because dating back to Bcache, Allocation has always been designed and uh, it's bucket based. Buckets ma uh, map very nicely to zones. So we've already got copying <coughs> garbage collection. Uh, zone devices are going to work just as well for us as normal walk devices. Uh like to also invite the floor for anyone that has any open topics that they'd like to discuss. We've got about 10 minutes. Yeah, just for, for say, clarification for the statements you shown now. So do not have all direct, Java do not have the all di direct. So that was what the, the statement for the past. It didn't have, but now it has. So, oh. so uh, using the Java API, you know, latest API, we can do that. Great, thanks. Okay, I didn't know. Well, it, it's still a pain to have to use all direct because you, you, you have your, your cache called essentially with that. So any read after write will go to the device. Um, in, with regards to testing, I guess I should mention, and it should have been obvious, I didn't state it before, but obviously I'm using KDevOps to test the hell out of uh, zone storage devices, both in block tests and FS tests. Uh, the only caveat there was uh, I found out late, and this is why I put in a bullet here, that you do need MQ deadline. So uh, I figured um, I will try both baselines, uh, one with uh, essentially the MQ deadline not set and also with it set. I think it's good to see both, um, have baselines for that. Uh, um, yes. So I if your drive for yes. testing is uh, um, a SATA drive connected to HCI, it's going to take about five seconds to get out of all the writes. Yeah, it's like almost instant. Yeah, I, this bit me because I like I didn't know I was setting up my own DNS stuff and butter up and stuff and just fell over. And I was like, oh god, they gave me bad drives. No, <laughs> the MQ deadline. No, it's HCI. HCI is just not actually respecting the order in which you issue commands. So, so the the adapter itself reorders command. And there's obviously two ways to also test it. If you want a virtualized environment, uh, you can use that with Chemian. 
we do that with MVD, uh, sorry, uh, an old block as well. Um, and um, there's some caveats uh, that, you know, one of them was RCU's flat that came out a little bit ago. Uh, so there are two different type of worlds that one can use to test. Um, so uh, yeah, any, any, any other topics that folks want to bring up for yeah, one, one thing that actually Christoph uh, talked about yesterday. Uh, uh, so for the for QMU has uh, ZNS engineering ZNS emulation, which is very convenient to use for for testing. However, uh, the state of the drive is not persistent across restart of QMU, which is really annoying sometimes. So it would be good to finish that one and have it persistent. <laughs> QMU. Can you repeat that, Daniel? Can you repeat that? I didn't catch that. The, um, the fact that the ZNS simulation in QMU is not persistent across restart of QMU. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Klaus has been working on that, yeah. but he has not. So I, I, and I think he, and they w he was not agreeing with Dimitri. They were fighting about it. So we just need to. <laughs> yeah, no, but I, I think that's a good idea to. Yeah. Um, I have an additional topic. So uh, today, the Linux kernel block layer supports the subset of zone storage that uh, is common between NGME and SCSI. Uh, should we keep an eye on the standards committee to prevent that uh, divergence or that the standards go a different uh, direction? I noticed in um, GVC2 that a whole bunch of new concepts are being added, for example, domains and realms devices. I haven't seen an equivalent in the NGME space. I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't really get wh where you want to go with that. Uh, wh 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 what's, what command do you want? Well, um, today the uh, block uh, zone storage works well. Mm. Or, uh, we can add support in file systems for zone storage uh, because what is supported in the Linux kernel is functionality that's shared between NGME and SCSI. Uh, if uh, one day uh, domains and realms devices would be supported, it would appear, and we would want to support each other file system in um, uh, Linux, we will end up with something that's specific for SCSI and doesn't work, that's not appropriate for NGME. Um, so yeah, today if you design for SCSI, you may run into trouble with NGME. That's correct, yeah because uh, ZNS has some, some um, features that don't really exist, that don't exist in, in, in on SMR in, in SCSI and ATA, like the active zone con concept. So that's actually the work we're doing right now for BetterFS to, to adapt, uh, to, to fix uh, active zone management, which is not really a concept that exists again in SMR. Uh, it's all unified under the same interface. It, it did work, to, the unification was actually very clean, it works, but yes, there are parameters that need to be looked at that differ between device types. Yes, correct. So uh, the challenge we are facing with Android is today we are deve developing um, or looking at zone storage for SCSI. One day we will switch to zone storage for NGME and uh, our hope is that we can keep the file system the same and that we won't have to rewrite the file system. So, so that, that's always been the goal uh, from the start for file systems. So wha whatever uh, work with one uh, device type, uh, it has to work with the other two. Uh, again, the block layer is, is abstracting the device type. That, that's the role of the block layer. And so uh, the file system, to some extent, should not have to care what, what device it's talking to. There is a set of parameters that describe the device and the file system has to work with them. So what we did for BetterFS, since the, for example, the active zone concept doesn't exist on SMR, we didn't care about it in, in BetterFS. So uh, once ZNS ca came in, we had to deal with it. So we added, uh, we are, uh, now Hero is adding uh, that support. So it, it's in already, it's a bit still buggy, uh, there, there's some problems. Uh, but but it, it is working the same way, and what an SMR, what BetterFS sees about an SMR drive is a drive that has, that has no active zone limit. 
whereas a CNS drive will have a limit. And then another difference there's between CNS and SMR is uh, Sona Pen. And for <coughs> us as a file system, Sona Pen really is awesome for, for data placement. So we don't have to care where we write our data, just pick a zone and then write it. And for, for SCSI, we uh, uh, wrote an emulation, basically just hooking records on a band and translating it to a right CDV and doing a right pointer tracking. So we, we can, uh, in the kernel, we have to have a, like a base layer that the file systems understand. So we don't need to change too much in the file systems and the file system simply shouldn't care if it's a CNS drive or a SMR drive. So I think to Bart's point, we need to keep in mind that there might be other standards coming along. We need to make sure that we support those because one, I think the worst thing that could happen is that if those standards are not in line with what is happening in the kernel today, we end up having emulation layers for very fast devices because they're not supporting the spec. So I think that's something, even though we want to keep zone storage as a common API underneath different drivers, at some point, maybe we need to acknowledge that the properties of those, the, the underlying media is different. And at some point, we might have to deviate. Uh, you know, the scheduler is one example, but there might be others. Yeah, I, and that's not the responsibility of a file system. Like, I ooh, cannot describe how little I care, right? And I think that the file system needs to not care. If you guys want to add a bunch of fancy bells and whistles, awesome. User space can use those. The file system does not need to have that intelligence built in. I fully agree with you. It's not a comment about the file system. It's a comment to make sure that the specs align to how things work so that we don't need to take care of that. Yeah, and I think like we have that, right? Like we know, okay, these are special. We have like special rules about what we can write. Like anything beyond that, I think the active, you know, the active zones make sense, right? You can only do so many areas. And okay, great, we have them in the file system too. But like I'm sort of reaching my limit of like what I think is acceptable to be stuffing in the butter of us, right? 100% agree. But you know, coming back to the scheduler thing, I mean, you you, you do experience that pain. Oh, uh, yeah, but no. the, the, the scheduler thing is just an implementation issue. We can we could re-implement that. We just need to find a better way to do of it. Course. Yeah. Yeah. That's like just what the order is. It's just an example. Right, and the, the scheduler thing is a really good example of a thing that I shouldn't have to think about, the file system shouldn't have to think about, that should have just been done automatically. I am willing to accept it because the stuff is still in transit. Cool. Things are going to happen. I switch to MPU deadline, whatever. I'm the upstream developer. I can eat that. Long term, that's not sustainable. And long term, more and more fancy things are not going to be sustainable. You guys come up with fancy stuff, great. Find user space applications for that. I think the file system is kind of nearing the limit of what we're willing to accept. Yeah, it seems to me the block layer is the right place for that sort of abstraction, right? So historically, things like discard, things like FUA, right? File systems use the block layer to find interface for those sorts of things. And we don't have to worry about, is it a SATA drive or a SAS drive? You know, we just do write zeros and you know, the block layer will magically transform that to whatever the right interface happens to be, whether it's a UFS device or whatever, right? And I think that's just long-term couldn't agree more. That's why the, it is very important that the block layer supports all some devices. So that's that's very important. I, I want to say, I mean, so we, I wholeheartedly agree, and and I my hope is that there are no more bells and whistles, because we want to make CNS as as a, as easy as possible to use or SMR, and we are kind of like simplify, 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 even if it means we are doing, as an SSD vendor is doing more logic on the drive, because we do know. CPUs doesn't get like exceptionally much faster. So just from that point, we wanna like be, uh, I mean, I think we found a really good ground now and we are really not looking to push the boundaries more than we are. I, th all, I think that the, the scheduler thing has been hanging over for a long time. I don't have a good answer. It, uh, so, uh, but it's, it's, it's a thing that's come up with every project we've done. Right. Um, uh, if anyone doesn't have drives, um, or want to work on this, there's zone storage.io. Um, so you can get CNS drives there, SMR drives. Um, there are vendors out there, I know every, every one of them has samples and so on. So, um, because I, we know these drives are not available in the channel, but they are available uh, with nearly SMR, no strings attached, 
TNS, the very little things whatsoever, um, that even individuals can, can get them. So there's no, no, no strings attached. Um, and, and we are working with Samsung on having a public cluster and stuff for testing and so on. And we already, with Ceph, we have Flyers and Ceph for all of this. And I mean, so we know it's, and we gotta have it part of our CI pipelines before it is even thing. And we wanna catch the errors before they land in your inboxes too. And we're building up infrastructure because it's a, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I like, I, I'm not criticizing any of, the work, any of the work that's been done up to this point. I think it's, everything's been fantastic, right? There's, it's going to be rough for these things, whatever. I, I completely understand, don't care. More is what I'm talking about is all the future talk of all the many fancy different things. Like, yeah, see, so we're good. We, what we got now is pretty good. And the more more things that you guys do to kind of differentiate yourselves from each other, I want to tell you now, like the file system is not going to be able to take advantage of it. We are not going to be smart enough to like be the interface for user applications to the fancy things. So like, let's keep that in mind because w there's only so much the file system knows and can do and only so much I can keep in my head, right? And so many, so much other developers can keep in their head. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I, I think the answer is, is that as there are new bells and whistles, there needs to be a conversation between the file system developers. So there might be some new feature, like for example, if there's a way for us to send hints about, you know, this is a journal, whether it's a database journal or a file system journal, and that would like significantly improve performance for a particular device, let's talk, right? Maybe we can come up with an interface that's not too bad, no. but the point is, is that uh, the uh, benefit has to be pretty large and the interface has to be fairly stable and simple or it's gonna be really, really hard to get the information plumbed in some cases from user space through the file system to the blockchain. Yeah, so that's my, more of my concern. Like there's definitely things that ButterFS itself can take advantage of, yeah. bells and whistles that ButterFS can do for its metadata and you know, exe 4 XFS can do for their metadata because they're the application, they control it. But as far as like translating those bells and whistles up through user space and keeping track of all of that, so it like, like, yeah, I, plumbing. like the plumbing, right? Like just, you know, off the top of my head, we have a special zone that will go super fast that we want users to take advantage of. Like ButterFS is not going to be able to get that right at all, <laughs> right? We're never gonna be able to set up a system in which that, that we can take advantage of that. That needs to be driven solely by the user space application that has full use of this. Yeah, I, I'm just saying, I can imagine, for example, because I know that the hint that this is actually a journal or this is hot data is one where maybe it would be worthwhile for MySQL and Postgres because there are only a handful of databases. Uh, and it would probably be an IOCTL, right, that you pass to the file system that we could then pass through, right? But, you know, it, it would have to be a special case and the benefits would have to be pretty large. I very much agree. I can't speak for <coughs> for anyone on this, but this is, there was uh, with Open Channel, that was too complex, and we had hard time getting developers and users for that before because it was hard. And it was great, you could do everything, but it was hard. And with DNS, from how I see it, is to simplify, simplify, and I, I really am sorry that we have these active like resources that has to be managed. But that was unfortunately what we had to do with NAND. Um, and I'm very sorry for all the Canes, Cotton, Johannes, and everyone else for implementing uh, support. But yes, we had, in my vision, it's kind of like we not want to push it further because the more we do, the less general uses we're going to have and the less applicable it will be. Um, yeah. Well, we're definitely past, but you know, there's nothing scheduled for 10.30, so unless anyone has anything else, I guess we'll wrap it up.